What's up, everybody? It's your boy Stevie the Black, S T E V Double E, the Black. I'm back. I know I'm a, I'm way late, you know, on my video for the week, my prediction video. But um, you know, a brother had a day off today, and my days off are usually spent just relaxing and chilling because my body hurts from the previous day and you know I, I just needed rest man rest and I did some laundry today because I ain't had no clothes but I just uh, I just needed to relax today and uh, before I knew it the day was over I gotta get gotta work today and uh I was like, dang, I did not do my video. I did not do my video. So, well, let me back this up just a little bit more. There we go. I was like, I did not do my video. So, I was like, let me go ahead and get this done out of the way, even though it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, so, it's Dallas week, guys. Um, I'm actually shocked that <laughs> they didn't flex this game out for something better, like Steelers and Ravens or... Seahawks and 49ers like those are probably going to be better games because they're between better teams you know than the Eagles and Cowboys right now but so far I mean I guess it's not too I don't know if it's too late or not but they have not changed it we are still flexed in for Sunday night in Philadelphia against Dallas and you know it's just not your typical oh man it's Dallas week you know hyped up you know because we suck, they suck. I mean, it's just like, is there really any hype to this game? You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm always gonna hope for the best and hope that we beat and root for us to beat the Dallas Cowboys, whether we're tanking or not, or whether we're chasing after a draft pick or not. Whatever the case may be, I'm always gonna re yo. We gotta beat Dallas. That's never gonna change. And. uh you know, things are going to be different. You know, there's going to be no Dak. You know, the Cowboys most likely are going to be playing their third string quarterback. Uh, Minucci, I think his last name is. Or something like that. If I don't, I haven't heard anything about Andy Dalton playing. He's still in concussion protocol, which I'm not really surprised about. Dude was knocked out. Knocked out in that game, bro. So I'm not surprised by that. Um, you know, and just like us, you know, Dallas is riddled by some injuries especially on their offensive line but you know it looks like we are starting to get healthy at you know just the right time you know Dallas Goddard you know he's at the 21 day window Jalen Rager Jason Peters all that stuff and 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 speaking of Jason Peters oh my gosh today at practice or yesterday at practice Jason Peters was in at left tackle and Jordan Malata was in at right tackle now Jason, now uh, Lane Johnson was not participating today, so maybe that has something to do with it, you know, and you would rather uh, Nate Herbig be at a right guard, no, I'm sorry, uh, Matt Pryor be at a right guard than at right tackle, but man, I was just like, no, man, there's got to be something you can do, Some, ugh. I mean, Jack Driscoll's still not healthy yet, so I guess you can, but I don't even know, can Jordan Mailata even play right tackle? I don't know, man, and even though we're going against a struggling Dallas Cowboys team, they still have a very talented defensive line, you know, and I just, I I, I, I don't know, it's, it's just me, I hope Lane can play Sunday, because I need Jordan Mailata at left tackle, I need Jason Peters at right guard, and I don't know. I mean, I guess I can kind of see where they're going with this, but Lane, man, and his stupid ankle. <sighs> but in other news, Jalen Rager might come back, but that might not matter because if the offensive line can't block, we ain't going to have time to throw it to Jalen Rager and Fulgham and, 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 and all G. Ward and all these guys because the offensive line won't be able to protect Carson Wentz. We've already allowed what? 28 sacks this year, like, oh my gosh. <sighs> I 
excuse me, I, I just miss the old days, man. The old days where, you know, we had a top five, top three offensive line. And and now, man, it's like we got glue and duct tape out there, bro. It's just craziness. But knowing the feeling, a lot of people... A lot of people expect the Eagles to win this game and to win this game easily. But see, here's the thing. They're not Philadelphia Eagles fans. I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. And I know this team. I said it last week that the Eagles should have blown out the New York Giants. They were a far better, far superior team. But I said the Eagles will make it closer than it actually needs to be. And that's what happened. Matter of fact, they made it so close that they fell behind by 11 points in the fourth quarter. But because it's the New York Giants, they were able to go ahead and win the game and come back. Now, as you get down the list of the schedule, there are a lot of teams we can't do that against. The Dallas Cowboys, they may be struggling, but they still got those three awesome wide receivers and Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and C.D. Lamb. So, to sit here and say that, oh man, they got a third-string quarterback, you know, offensive line, I, I still can't count this team out. And they're, like I said, they still have a very talented defensive line over there. And I'm just like, man, I, I just hope we can get away and win this game, you know. But I, I know this team, and I know they'll make it closer than it has to be. I know they will because they won't do the simple things. And it's funny because I was sitting there, and I was listening to uh, a, a, a YouTube channel. I was watching a YouTube channel Um I think they're called the Sports Sports Fury, you know, which a Chicago Bears fan and a Dallas Cowboy fan. They're they're good people. I like them. I enjoy their channel. But they were talking about and they were predicting games of uh for this week. And they got to the uh Bears and Saints game and something very interesting that the Bears fan said is he said that uh you know, he's sick and tired of Matt Nagy's play calling and the fact that it's getting Nick Foles upset. You know, and Nick Foles is kind of calling out his head coach a little bit, which is something you really don't see from him. You know, and and the fact that he's saying that and the fact that he's on his couch and he knows what's going to happen, it's like, and he wants his head coach to stop calling plays. I'm sitting here and I'm going, are you sure you're not talking about Doug Peterson? But here's the thing. Both Matt Nagy and Doug Peterson have something in common. They come from that Andy Reid tree. And they're stuck in Andy Reid's old ways while Andy Reid himself continues to evolve and get better and change with the times. Now, does that have something to do with the fact of the type of team that he has? Oh, sure, absolutely. You know, when you have someone as Patrick Mahomes and Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey and Sammy Watkins and those boys over there, and now Le'Veon Bell, who which I wanted last year, you know, it's just it. No wonder he he has the flexibility to do what he wants. You know, there he's starting to run the ball more and be more effective, and it's not always pass, pass, pass. You know, he's adapting, he's evolving, but it seems like his assistants, guys that grew up under him, cannot change with the times, man. Look at your teacher. Look at what he's doing. Look at why he's succeeding. I've always said Carson Wentz was a lesser version of Patrick Mahomes. There is no Patrick Mahomes but Patrick Mahomes. But I think Carson Wentz is a lesser version of him. And if you have that same type of quarterback as Patrick Mahomes, you guys should be able to teach, should be just as good. You know, we don't have the same weapons. I mean, we got a top five. Well, we used to have a top five tight end, top three tight end, and Zach Gers, not anymore. Um, you know, but I, Dallas Scott is on his way up. You know, you know, we got these nice, young, emerging wide receivers and Fulgham and Ward and Rager and Hightower and Watkins. And we got, you know, uh, Miles Sanders, but he does duck. And we got the pieces to be just as explosive, I believe, as Kansas City. But because Doug is in his own way, man, I don't know if it's because of the lack of weapons or not, but... But I know he's going to get in his own way at some point, and the game is going to be closer than he think. The defense, <sighs> look, man, I don't know what you want me to say about the defense. I mean, they're also up and down. I mean, for one minute, they could be dominating the Cowboys and or another team, and then the next minute, they'll give up. 
basically 95 yard touchdown drives because they can't get off the field and they're inconsistent and they're doing dumb stuff. You know, but we are getting healthy. We're getting the Maddox back and we're getting Roby Coleman back in his natural position. And so the Eagles are getting healthy, you know, but I don't know if Malik Jackson's going to be playing. I don't think so. But, you know, it's just so much stuff going on. You know, I, this bar is coming at the right time, man. It, it, it really is. But well, if I had to pick, when it comes to Eagles and Cowboys, I'm always going to pick my team. I'm always going to pick the Eagles over the Cowboys. I can't stand the Cowboys. I don't like the Cowboys, as do all of you. Um, and it may boil down to the fact that we have our starting quarterback, and they don't. We have Carson Wentz. They have a third-string backup. I mean, when you're on your third-string quarterback, I mean, that's not good. It's really not good. And... You know, there's only so much he can do. There's a reason why he was the third string. Though, can I see this Eagles team for some reason letting him have a day? Yeah, I can see that because it's the Eagles and they will underestimate him. But they have no right in the, to underestimate him. They should have blew out the Giants last week and didn't do that. They should have beaten the Ravens. Them at the Ravens. Well, they should have beaten the Giants. Didn't do that. Should have beaten the Bengals. Didn't do that. Should have beaten Washington. Didn't do that. So there are a lot of teams that they should have just decimated and dominated, and they didn't because they're inconsistently consistent. So with that being said, I'm, I, I, I mean, I, I know it's like I'm being negative and I'm being down on my team and all this stuff, but and part of me is still conflicted because I want to win the NFC East and get Carson Wentz more real playoff time football. But another part of me really wants a top 10 pick because we need to make some changes, bro, especially on the defensive side of the ball. We really do need to make some changes, and I'm conflicted, but maybe we can still do that, and I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to pick the Eagles to win. I'm going to say they win. I'll say they win 28 Twenty-eight ten, because like I said, it is a third-string quarterback. But then again, he does have those wide receivers over there, and our besides Darius Slay, I I don't really trust anybody else on the defense. So I'm gonna say I'll say twenty-eight seventeen. Maybe they make it interesting, but the Eagles pull away late because. The Dallas, at the end of the day, the Dallas Cowboys defense is trash. I mean, ours isn't any better, barely, but. Theirs looks to be worse. So, I'm going to go with the Eagles. Final score, 28-17. Um, let me know your guys' just uh, predictions for the game in the comment section down below. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, share this video. Uh, let's get continue to get some more views, guys. My goal was is still to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. I know we can do it, guys, but you got to spread the word. You know, I, I get a lot of, you know, comments saying, oh, man, great video, great video, good job, keep up the good work. And I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. But I need you to spread the word. Spread the word. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. We can do it, guys. We can do it. So please spread the word. You guys know I love you. And until next time, if you're not done with that, I've just got three words for you. Fly, Eagles, fly. Peace out, guys.